Hello, it's Amber, and today I wanted to talk to you about organizing your digital scrapbooking supplies. There's a lot of discussion regarding this topic, a lot of different ways to go about it, um, but this is the way that I have found is most organized and the way that I can easily find stuff without having to do a lot of work um, with tagging individual files and things like that. I don't have time for that. I barely have enough time to unzip the stuff that I've got. Um, but when you're starting out, it's a little overwhelming because you really just don't even know what is going on. And if you can get a system in place from the beginning, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of frustration. Um, even if you're a digital scrapbooker who's been doing it for a while, um, if you're not happy with your current organizational system, this might be something that you could transition to. Because um, I find it works really well and I don't need any additional software. I don't have to spend a lot of time, like I said, tagging or, or whatever. Um, so what you need to do is get yourself a digital scrapbooking folder. I have a couple of hard drives in my computer. You might only have one. Um, um, or you may save your stuff to an external hard drive. Wherever it is, just have one folder that is called digital scrapbooking. For me, it's on one of my secondary drives, um, and it's right here, digital scrapbooking. And that's where just about everything goes. Within that folder, I have things broken down into um, general categories of stuff. Um, I have a 600 by 600, which is basically all of my web-sized um, files go in there. Um, I have it organized by year, um, just so that I can kind of keep track of how many pages I made in a year. And I tend to remember kind of when I made pages, so if I need to reference these, I have a general idea what year it was, and they're easy to find. I have a commercial use folder. Um, if you're a designer, you would probably have a lot more in there than I do. I have a few things that I've picked up, freebies and, and things that I've gotten on sale that I thought I might use, and it's just, you know, a couple of things. Um, my completed pages is where I save all my layered PSD files. Um, because I keep those. A lot of people don't. It's really up to you. I like to have them because there's been many times where I have found a typo or wanted to go back and um, not necessarily completely redo an older page, but maybe update the shadows with new shadowing techniques that I learned, stuff like that. So I keep those. Um, my CT stuff folder is where I have, you know, documents that I need from like CT requirements or where I save um, pages that I need to upload. And then once I've uploaded them, then I move them to my 600 by 600 folder. And that way I kind of keep track of if I've uploaded something or not, and I'm not always trying to remember what's going on with that. Um, there's other stuff in there, just anything related to my CT work. I have a hybrid templates folder. Obviously, that's where I keep all my hybrid templates. Um, I have my kits folder, which is where the majority of almost everything I have goes. Um, mini albums, which is usually like free things that I've downloaded like quick page mini album things. Um, miscellaneous stuff, which is, doesn't really have anything in it. <laughs> I don't know what that's for, really. Random templates um, is like if I downloaded a freebie template from a designer who I don't normally frequent, so they don't have a folder of their own. I just stick things in there. Standalone alphas, same thing as the templates. It's alphas just randomly here and there that I've found and downloaded that I wanted to keep and also standalone elements the same kind of thing when I don't have when it's not a designer who I have enough stuff to give it a, its own designer folder which is how I generally organize stuff which is within the kits folder which kits just to me is an easy way to say it because it's the majority of kits but I also put templates in there by template designers it really should be called designers but I call it kits so you you can call it whatever you want so this is where I've got all of my kits. As you can see, I've got a folder for each designer. Um, let me pull up Susie's folder because I have a lot of stuff from Susie. I'm on her CT. I've been on her CT for years. So I have like every single thing that she's practically ever released. 
<laughs> so within that I've got alphas, I've got extras, and I've got kits. Um, if if someone if it's a designer who does a lot of templates, I will have a templates folder. Otherwise, I would just drop you know it in the extras folder if they had one here every every so often. Within my kits folder of that designer, you can see I have a folder for each kit or collection if it's like a bundle of stuff. So like for instance, um, this is a standalone kit. I get just the kit preview as the folder um, dot jpg which is how I'm able to, if you look right here you can see like a very small preview of the kit. That's if you name it that folder dot jpg you will get the same thing if when you're viewing this you have it set to icon large icon. So now I've got the papers, I've got the elements, the alpha, the add-on, and if there was any other, you know, if it had other stuff. Generally that's what you've got for a kit. If it's a collection, for instance, like, um, well, here's a good collection. This is a four-part collection of these three kits and a word art pack. So I've got the add-on and then the little Lola Boy and the Lullaby Lane kit. Or I mean the main kit and then the two add-ons, sorry. Um, and then within that folder I have it broken down paper, elements, alpha, and then any additional things that are specific to that one. Um, and that's basically how I organize kits and, and files. It's the same thing if, like in this alpha. It's, a folder for each alpha pack. Um, in the extras I've got, you know, these are just random things like paper packs or doodles or digital stamps, um, you know, like that. And you, you just create a folder, you know, when you buy something or you download something, create a folder with the name, unzip everything to that folder, organize it how you want it, and then you're done. Now, where my real organization comes can come into play, and if you you know are a power organizer, um, you would want to start using. There's a feature in Windows 7 called Libraries, and with when you um, create a library, so if you click on Libraries, right click and create new library, and you can name it something. Um, I already have one for Scrap Orchard, but you could have one for each store you frequent. So um, uh, I'll just do the lily pad, okay? And then you could create another one, and you would have um, Sweet Shop Designs. And you could create another one, and you could have Scrap Matters. Or I don't think there's a space, but whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. And so you can see you can organize by store if that's something you like to do. I, when I was more into challenges and I visited more than one store, um, I found it difficult to know which designer was a part of which store, and and it got really overwhelming. And I just kind of got frustrated and said, "Forget it. I don't care. I'm not gonna do challenges anymore." But if you like challenges and that's something you do and you go to a variety of stores, this would be a good system for you. To add a designer to a store, you click on, um, double click on that library, and it's going to say, oh, there's nothing in here. Include a folder. Okay, so let's go find a folder. Um, Krista Solin, I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. So, I, that's what I say. Solin's Studio. You would, you would, don't open it because you want that whole folder so you just click on it to select it and then click include folder and it's going to include it in your library and now I have one folder um, now I want to add another one so what you would want to do is over here right click and properties Include a folder and um, oh, 
I've got to go back to my main kits folder and find uh, another Michelin Martin. I think that's a, I, I hate saying people's names because I don't know if I'm saying it right, but that's what I say in my head. She's at the lily pad. I'm pretty sure, right? I hope so. Well, if not, I can change it. I'll show you how easy it is to change something. This'll, and so then you just click OK. And now it's included in the lily pad. So as you can see in my scrap orchard, I've got all the scrap orchard designers included. Um, so you might be saying, oh, well, what happens when someone changes a store? Which happens <laughs> pretty frequently in the digital scrapbooking community. Um, let's say, you know, uh, Krista moves to Sweet Shop. Not gonna, probably not going to happen. I'm, this is not any inside information. This is just for <laughs> example. Just for an example. You would um, select her folder right here. Select properties. Or no, excuse me. You would select the store that she's under now. Select properties. You would highlight her folder and remove it. Okay, now that's not actually removing anything from your computer, that's just removing that link to that library. Then you would go to the new store, so she's moving to a new store, and you would go through the same process. Right click properties, include a folder, navigate to uh, where it is, click it, and include. And now it's going to be included in there. So you didn't actually have to cut and paste any of your actual files, you didn't have to to move anything, you just moved a link from one place to another. Um, alternatively, you can also um, click and drag. So there. Now I've got her in two places. So there are designers out there who are in more than one store. So if you want to have them included in each store that they sell at, you can do it that way too. Um, so we'll go ahead and remove this from Sweet Shop because she doesn't actually share or sell there. And remove. Okay. So now you have an idea of what I use. Now you can create a library for anything. You, like I've got one for um, my pictures. So I generally keep my pictures to one place, but every once in a while a picture will end up somewhere else, and so I've got those in there. Um, if you have a lot of music in different places, or you want to create, you know, organize it by genre, you know, you could have a country library, you could have a rap library, you know, and then organize it that way. Um, but I find that this really works well for digital scrapbooking. Um, for me to be able to organize by designer and then also by store you could create a library you know you could go in here and you could have libraries you know for holidays or you could have it say summer so you could put all your summer kits in there you could um, you know boy have all your boy kits in there or whatever I mean you can have as many libraries as you want you can have multiple folders linked to multiple libraries. There's no real restrictions on that. Um, another thing that I wanted to also sh talk about was finding things because I don't like to tag. A lot of people like to go through and tag every single file with what it is and what color it is and what patterns are in that paper and what kind of element it is and what season it's for. And I mean that's just a lot of work. <laughs> for me, a lot of work. Um, so if I wanted to go and search every kit I have for something, I would go back to my main digital scrapbooking folder, go to my kits folder, and then up here in the top right, you could put in whatever you're searching for. Um, I want to find, you know, something with uh, a Santa. You know, I'm going to do a Christmas page, Santa. So you type in Santa, and it's going to go through, and it's going to search, and it's going to find every instance of the word Santa in a file name. The downside to this is that if you have a designer who does not descriptively title their papers, elements, what have you, 
you're going to miss stuff. So that's one of the downsides to it. But for me, by and large, the designers that I frequent and, and do descriptively name their files. You know, like if you have someone who's like element one, element two, element three, that's not going to work. But if, you know, for instance, you know, Tracy Stroud has this from one of her kits and it's a word art, W-A dash Santa. So it comes up in my search. So as you see, as it searches through all your files, it's pulling up all these Santas um, or Christmas kits that have Santa in the name or what have you. This is how I find things and it's the best of both worlds for me to be able to search for things but not have to tag stuff my own self. Um, alternatively, if you want to search by store, same thing, you would just come over here to your spe that specific library. So if I just wanted to look at Scrap Orchard and only find, you know, snowflakes that are from Scrap Orchard designers, same thing. You're searching within that library. So it's going to go and here it'll search and search and search. And now it's coming up with all these snowflakes that are from my Scrap Orchard kits. So I hope that that gives you an idea on how you can do some organizing for your digital scrapbooking folders without having to take a lot of time to go through and tag and do all of that business. But if you like to tag, good on you. Keep on, you know, keep on keeping on. <laughs> I can't, can't keep up a system like that. And if you're like me, this might be something that will work for you. So let me know if you have any questions. You can contact me, um, amber565 at gmail.com. Thanks.